what is going on with amnesty on Capitol Hill? I see all these very positive articles in these pseudo-conservative conservative media outlets that Johnny Boehner has surprised us, that Johnny's plowing ahead to repeal Obama's unconstitutional acts and to secure the border. But ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Boehner's doing a head fake. Yes, Johnny Boehner is doing these things. And he knows they'll be defeated in the Senate and ultimately by Obama. But this is just a distraction. I'm going to prove it to you. First, let's start with Johnny Boehner today at his news conference. Obviously before happy hour. Cut eight, go. Our goal here is to fund the Department of Homeland Security. And our, our second goal is to stop the president's uh, executive overreach. Now, this is not the way our government was intended to work. The president said 22 times that he didn't have the authority to do what he eventually did. He knows, he knows the truth here, and so do the American people. And our job is to listen to the American people and hold the president accountable. The only thing that matters in what he said is the first sentence. Play it again, just the first sentence. Go. Our goal here is to fund the Department of Homeland Security. Stop. In funding the Department of Homeland Security, he is funding unconstitutional amnesty by this president. I'm not opposed to him funding the rest of the Department of Homeland Security within limits because they're all budget busters. But as a, as a philosophical matter, but he's also planning on funding the unconstitutional amnesty. Now he can go on with the rest of his statement, but that's really what we call static. Or we lawyers call it dicta. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Now, further to this point, our friend Daniel Horowitz over at uh, conservativereview.com, he points out, just as the uh, ink dried on uh, praising Republican House leadership for proposing a solid bill defunding Obama's amnesty, Boehner has once again reminded us why we are so leery of offering positive feedback on GOP leadership. Although he is giving conservatives what they want in the first round of legislation, with six weeks to go until the funding deadline for the Department of Homeland Security, Boehner appears to have other tricks up his sleeve. When asked by a reporter during a press conference, you heard it, about funding DHS, he said yes, they intend to fund it. He refused to stand before the American people and say in no uncertain terms that the People's House will fund every aspect of the DHS, but not one penny for lawlessness, but not one penny for amnesty. And by now, Obama can see straight through Boehner's equivocation with full confidence he will never engage in brinksmanship. But then again, Boehner already told Obama, do what you got to do on executive amnesty. Remember that? He worked with Obama. Out of one side of his mouth, he supported executive amnesty with Obama, and then out of the other side, he attacks it. It's even harder to take Boehner seriously on DHS funding and an even bigger slap in the face when he's preparing to pay Obama's extortion for proposing amnesty bills before the February 28 DHS funding deadline. So if you listen carefully to recent comments from members closely aligned with, with uh, Boehner, you'll notice a familiar pattern. Instead of opposing amnesty, they merely eschew a comprehensive bill and focus on the need for step-by-step -step proposals. They say the effort must begin with border security, and they always reveal their endgame, negotiating with Obama on amnesty. Now, this latest development is disturbing for a lot of reasons. First, even if amnesty was a good policy idea, Congress should never establish a precedent of negotiating with a president who defies the law of the land and implements his own edicts. That's right. For that reason alone, Congress should never pass an immigration bill till Obama leaves office unless he rescinds the executive orders. Obama's executive actions must not be legitimized by using them as the baseline from which to craft an immigration bill. Now, Senator Sessions noted, he put out a manifesto on immigration today, immigration reform might be the single most abused phrase in the English language. True immigration reform, one that places our economic and national security interests before those of illegal aliens in these radical front groups, would require implementation of enforcement before there's any discussion of amnesty. And I've pointed this out many times. Boehner and his allies think that by passing a weak border security law on February 1 and an amnesty bill on February 20, it would constitute enforcement before amnesty. 
But the reality is that this is not a legislative problem. It's an implementation problem. And the enforcement mechanisms will certainly not be enacted as long as Obama is president. True immigration reform would mean that these measures, a border fence, visa tracking, local and interior enforcement, and walling off the welfare state, are actually implemented and pass muster first, before the courts, and before any discussion of amnesty. Now that takes a matter of years, not days or weeks. And most of the enforcement proposals are already on the books. Yet this president has nullified them. He's a nullifier. What's the point of passing new laws during his presidency that merely reiterate the current laws he refuses to follow? No immigration bill should be brought to the floor during the next two years, aside from prima facie security that actually improve current law and project a bold contrast with Obama, such as laws that clamp down on immigration from volatile parts of the world or tighten up our refugee and asylum policies as well as our visa policies, where people come in on tourist visas, seasonal work visas, teaching visas, what have you, and then they stay. And all of a sudden, they have a right to a pathway to legalization and then a subsequent pathway to citizenship. All conservatives should unite and pass the solid DHS funding bill tomorrow. But conservatives should keep their eyes wide open and prepare to lay down the law with those who seek to appease a lawless president by subsequently negotiating legislative amnesty in return for easing off of executive amnesty. This is a serious matter. It's even more serious than people may actually think or realize. The National Review Online. Well, up there on the Drudge Report, headline, FBI says John Boehner's Westchester bartender planned to poison him. Man said he was Jesus, Boehner was the devil. Deer Park, Ohio, Ebola, evil voices, and the devil. Over at WCPO. Those are just a few of the things uh, a Butler County bartender cited as reasons he was going to kill House Speaker John Boehner this past fall. Federal agents said, well, at least in my case, Mr. Producer, they threaten me over my views, correct? And my religion. Michael Robert Hoyt, 44, was indicted January 7 on charges of threatening to murder the congressman in a plot police said included poisoning his drink at a country club. Let this be a lesson to you country club Republicans. Hoyt served drinks to Boehner for more than five years. <laughs> Sorry. At the, Weathering, at the Weatherington Country Club in Westchester, it was known as Bartender Mike to employees there. Hoyt called police on October 29, a week after being fired from the club, and blamed Boehner for his woes. When officers visited Hoyt at his home at Matson Avenue in Deer Park, they said the plot thickened. Hoyt told the officer he was Jesus Christ, and he was going to kill Boehner because Boehner was mean to him at the country club, and because Boehner is responsible for Ebola. I thought Obama was responsible for it. Oh, whatever. United States Capitol Police Special Agent Christopher whatever said, Hoyt advised he had a loaded Beretta, 380 automatic, and he was going to shoot Boehner and take off. So he just blurts all this out to the cop, Mr. Producer, and that he's Jesus. Officer said Hoyt told them he regretted not having enough time to put something in Boehner's drink. It was also discovered Hoyt emailed Boehner's wife about the plot a day before he called police. So the guy called police. And then they have an email there, and uh, let's see. Hoyt said he started to hear the devil's voice from the speakers in his car and his radio at home after he was fired. Don't look at me. I don't have the devil's voice. No. The voices were telling him that Boehner was evil. He told investigators he dialed 911 because he believed evil people were going to come chop him up. And he was trying to expose Boehner as the devil, according to court documents. Police said Hoyt also typed an 11-page blog detailing his thoughts about Boehner being the devil and emailed it to his father, ex-girlfriend and neighbor. But I have to say Harry Reid is the devil, Mr. Producer, not John Boehner. Would you agree with me? Boehner's a rhino. It's different than a devil. 
And by the way, you notice Harry Reid still isn't back. He may lose his eyesight in that eye from his exercising accident, which I believe involved uh, vodka and a uh, high set of uh, stairs. But what do I know? I'm just surmising. Hoyt said he used to pour wine for Boehner often and could have easily poisoned his drink, but he didn't. He said no one checked the drinks he poured for Boehner, and it would have been very easy to slip something in there. This is pretty sick. Hoyt also told agents he imagined a scenario where he confronted Boehner about Ebola. Uh, They better put this boy away for a long, long time, I think. Long, long time. Sounds like a uh, liberal Democrat to me, but then so many do. 